Chapter 26, The Law of Entropy, The Law of Satan. The laws of thermodynamics explain the physical laws, the laws of the behavior of energy in this universe. And the first law of thermodynamics is the law of conservation, that energy can be transferred, but is neither created nor destroyed. And energy exists in five different forms. Radiant, which is greater than chemical, greater than physical, greater than electrical, greater than heat. And the highest form is radiant energy, or heat from the sun. And the lowest form is heat energy, or heat from a fire. And energy can be converted from one form to another. And the second law of thermodynamics is the law of a degradation of energy. That the quality of energy is degraded irreversibly over time. And when energy is converted from one form to another, degraded energy is lost and is unable to produce further work. And this degraded energy is called entropy, or S. The thermodynamic process always proceeds from a system with a high quality of potential energy and a low amount of entropy into a system with low quality of expended energy and a high amount of entropy. And the form of energy with the highest amount of entropy is heat energy. And the mathematical representation of a change in entropy is delta S, where entropy increases as a function of heat, which is mathematically represented by delta Q. Thus, where T represents absolute temperature of the system, the equation is. Thus, entropy increases as heat increases. And in fact, many physicists have hypothesized that the universe is fated to a heat death, in which all energy ends up as a homogeneous distribution of thermal energy and no further useful energy exists. For the powers of this universe follow the laws of entropy, and the powers of this universe are governed by the laws of its ruler who is Satan. And when the fire of wrath ensues, entropy, or the power of Satan, will increase, for as it says, Woe to the earth and the sea, because the devil has come down to you having wrath, knowing that he has only a short time. Revelation 12 and 12. And when the radiance of the sun returns, his wandering fork will gather his wheat, and he will throw out the chaff of perdition, and his wandering fork is in his hand, and he will thoroughly clear his threshing floor, and he will gather his wheat into the barn, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. And the world in which we live in is an imperfect image of the kingdom of God. For the laws of this earth are contrary to the laws that exist in his kingdom. For where there is order in heaven, there is disorder on earth. And where the heavens exceed in all things, the earthly kingdom fails in all things. For King David spoke of the order of God's house. Truly is not my house so with God, for he has made an everlasting covenant with me, ordered in all things and secured. 2 Samuel 23 and 5 And the Lord reaffirmed that his house was above, for he said, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then my servants would be fighting so that I would not be handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not of this realm. John 18 and 36 And now being servants of Christ, we are not of this world, but are inheritors of his kingdom. And just as Christ died for our sins, so must we suffer for him, that his heavenly kingdom may be advanced. For as he forewarned us, if you were of the world, your world would love its own. But because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, because of this the world hates you. John 15 and 18. But he shall return, for his priests were commanded to keep order in his temple, to keep the lamps in order on the pure gold lampstand before the Lord continually. Leviticus 24 and 2. For as the Lord said to his bride, Be dressed in readiness and keep your lamps lit. Luke 12 and 34. For the realm of this world is an imperfect image of the kingdom to come. For the ruler of this world is not God, but the ruler of this world is Satan. For when Satan tempted the Lord in the desert, did Satan not tempt him with the inheritance of the earth? Matthew 4 and 8. And though Satan would be a fool to offer this world to a mortal man, the Lord still gave us the solemn warning. 
For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits his soul? Or what will a man gain in exchange for his soul? Matthew 16 and 26. Thus we are not to place hope in this world, for this world is perishable, but to place our hope in the heavens above, for the heavens are eternal. For he who loves his life loses it, and he who hates his life in this world will keep it to life eternal. John 12 and 25. And before the Lord parted, he promised that Satan would return. I will not speak much more with you, for the ruler of this world is coming, and he has nothing in me. John 14 and 30. And by our Lord's descent into hell and his rising into heaven, Satan was bound for 1,000 years. But Satan was released back into this world and has ruled it with great power and deception. As it says, when the thousand years were completed after these things, he must be released for a short time. Revelation 20 and 3. And the laws of entropy which govern this world have a tremendous impact on our view of the universe. For if we truly believe in the laws of entropy, then the only future for mankind is annihilation and death. And when God withheld his blessings from Job, Job succinctly called this land, the land of darkness and deep shadow, the land of utter gloom as darkness itself, of deep shadow without order, and which shines as the darkness, Job 10 and 22. And James spoke of the wisdom which governs this earth. This wisdom is not that which comes down from above, but is earthly, natural, demonic. For a jealousy and selfish ambition exists, there is disorder and every evil thing. James 3 and 14. But by God's grace and his loving mercy, we have some semblance of his order. For it is not by the laws of Satan that the sun gives us light by day and the moon gives us light by night, but it is by the power of God alone. Jeremiah 31 and 35. And now as servants of God, we are taught to emulate the laws which govern his kingdom, the laws of love and forgiveness and order. For as Paul said, all things must be done properly and in an orderly manner. 1 Corinthians 14 and 40. For we are not servants of this world, but we were sent in this world as servants of God to spread the word of his sacrifice for mankind. John 17 and 16. And by our servitude, God commands us to be his bondservants, to walk on the earth as Christ did, without selfish or hatred or conceit, but regarding one another as more important than ourselves. Philippians 2 and 3. But few have followed his commands, and God will remove that which he controls, the order of this world and the universe. For the prophets of old foretold that the fixed order of the world would end. If this fixed order departs from me, declares the Lord, then the offspring of Israel also will cease from being a nation before me forever. Jeremiah 31 and 36. For as the Lord promised, mankind will never again be destroyed by water. For this time mankind will be destroyed by fire, and the Lord will return and harvest his fruits, but each in its own order. Christ the first fruits, after that which are Christ at his coming, then comes the end, when he hands over the kingdom to God and Father, when he has abolished all rule and all authority and power, for he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy that will be abolished is death. First Corinthians 15 and 20.